Hello, and welcome to the final day of the Greenlight Guru True Quality Virtual Summit. I hope you've had the chance to enjoy the last few days of learning actionable tips, trends, and best practices to achieve true quality for your medical devices and business. This session is on practical insights into managing and leading medical device companies and teams during the pandemic. My name is Wade Schrader, medical device guru here at Greenlight Guru, and I will be your moderator for this special session. I know our speakers, Amishi Varagade and Dave Manku, are really looking forward to sharing ways to prioritize your team's health and well being, communicate, and customize your methodology to support the dynamic of remote work. Before we dive too deep into today's presentation and introduce our speakers and their company, Azure Group, I'm going to touch on a few items real quick. First, this session is going to run for about 45 minutes in total, and we'll include a Q&A session at the end where Amishi and Dave have been kind enough to answer your questions. So I encourage you to submit your questions throughout the presentation as they come up in the box on the right-hand side, and we will get to as many of them as time permits. This entire session will be recorded. Once this session wraps up, there is a 10 minute break before the next live session begins. If you're interested in learning how to navigate raising funds for med tech startups during a pandemic, make sure you're registered for the next session and use your unique link to tune in. If you aren't already signed up, you can register at virtual-summit.greenlight.guru. I'd also like to share a few words about Greenlight Guru and why we put on this free virtual summit. If you've been on one of our training sessions before, then you know we put these on because improving the quality of life is our mission here at Greenlight Guru, likely a similar mission as many of you at today's summit. Anything we can do as an organization that helps device makers bring safer, life-changing devices to market quicker and with less risk aligns with that mission. We're constantly looking for ways to fulfill that mission, whether that's through hosting free events and training sessions, through partnering with world-class medical device consultants, or through our award-winning medical device QMS software. If you'd like to learn more about why medical device companies from across the globe are moving away from paper-based general purpose quality management systems and adopting our purpose-built medical device quality management software, I encourage you to head on over to www.greenlight.guru after today's presentation to schedule your free personalized one-on-one -on -one demo. Now, onto the bulk of today's presentation. Let me give a proper introduction to today's speakers. Amishi Viragade is a team lead and consultant with Azure Group San Francisco, specializing in medical device manufacturing and business development. A biomedical engineer, Amishi has experience in product development, management, operations, validation, and data analysis in both medical device and biotech industries. She brings value to her clients through her passion for leadership, innovation, and strategic problem solving. Amishi holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Biomedical Engineering from Worcester Polytech Institute, and she is actively pursuing a master's degree in engineering management from Cornell University. She is joined by Dave Manku, managing partner at Azure Group, he has more than 20 years experience in consulting in the FDA regulated water treatment industries. He is a co-founder of Biospec Inc, a full service consulting firm to biotech, pharmaceutical, med device, and food slash cosmetic industries that merged with Azure in 2014. Dave has an undergraduate degree in biochemistry and chemical engineering and a master of engineering degree in chemical engineering, all from the University of Ottawa. Dave is a registered professional engineer in Ontario, Canada. Amishi will be handling the presentation while Dave will be hopping on at the end to help with any questions. Without further ado, Amishi, take it away. Hi everyone. Firstly, I hope you and your loved ones are safe during this pandemic. Next, I really wanted to thank everyone for taking the time out to join my talk today. So let's get started. All right, so I'll quickly walk you through the agenda of my talk today. First, we will walk through some of the advantages and disadvantages of working remotely. Second, we'll walk through a role of a leader in this current situation. And finally, we'll walk through some of the solutions to work from home challenges that we are facing today. 
So my very first question is, how are medical device teams currently working during this pandemic? Right now, the medical teams are either working on site or are working from home. For our teams that are on site, leaders have already established a COVID-19 response plan by implementing the regional, state, and national government safety regulations. However, on the other hand, there are a great number of employees that are facing this remarkably new and different team dynamic being remote workers. Now you must be wondering, what part does a leader play? Answer is, helping the teams to seamlessly transfer from on-site environment to, an, to a remote working environment. So for our today's presentation, we will try to focus how leaders can guide and support their teams in this unique situation of remote work. This talk is an opportunity for all of us to share ideas that we can brainstorm and optimize the situation better. Oh, hey, would a presentation slide be a presentation without an obligatory de definition slide? So here we are. As most of you most likely know by now, WFH stands for, for working from home. Also, by the way, I've used a lot of WFH on different slides during this presentation. So you know what WFH stands for if you see it in my upcoming slides. Moving on. While I was preparing this presentation, I started to wonder how can we evaluate this current work from home situation the best. We can only judge a situation the best when we are in it, right? So I thought, why don't we as leaders try to understand the situation better by stepping in both the employees and the company shoes? I mean, we may miss on a lot of different perspectives if we don't step in either of those. So today, I plan to walk us through this presentation by getting a viewpoint of how work from home looks like for both an employee and a company. And later, we'll also try to find out some potential solutions based on these very two different perspectives that we'll get by being in each other's shoes. Past few months, most of us have been centered to working from home during this pandemic, right? So I started to look into some stats and surveys online just to kind of gauge how the current pandemic situation looks like in terms of working from home and how maybe you know work from home could be the new normal. According to Gartner, 64% of today's professionals reported that they could work from anywhere. They also reported that 71% of organizations that polled offered remote work policies already. This trends a 30% increase of demand for remote work by 2030. According to Fundera, employees offering at least part-time telecommuting flexibility collectively saved $44 billion each year. Now you know why work from home is probably here to stay. As a leader, let's first try to fill into the company's shoes and try to understand how remote working looks like from an employee's perspective. We'll also try to gauge the work from home advantages and disadvantages from an employee standpoint first. All right, like every coin has two sides, so does working from home. So let's try to find out the biggest benefit of working from home from an employee's perspective. For that, let's dig into the state of remote report by Buffer and AngelList. Buffer surveyed over 3,500 employees from around the globe just to give us a look into experiences and feelings of being a remote worker. 32% employees polled that ability to have a flexible schedule was the top benefit. I think I can see why. Wouldn't you like to have flexible days and hours while working remotely? Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Next, 26% employees told that flexibility to work from anywhere was the biggest advantage. 21% employees thought that not having to commute is the biggest advantage. Okay, so I am from California, and guess what? We are pretty famous for our traffic, like pretty famous. Now imagine beginning your day without that prolonged car line. Oof, that can be seriously so tiring. Employees can reduce their traveling costs and save a lot of money as well. Next, 11% thought that ability to spend time with the family was the best. Agreed. I love it. All right. Now that we have 
actually figure out what employees value the most in a remote setting, let's look at their biggest struggle in terms of, of course, employees' perspectives here. So 20% employees polled that collaboration and communication was their top struggle. Another 20% polled that loneliness was their biggest challenge. Next up, 18% employees thought that not being able to unplug was the biggest hurdle. 12% thought that distractions at home was challenging. Some of the other challenges that an employee faced were being in a different time zone than other teammates, staying motivated, taking vacation time off, and of course, finding reliable Wi-Fi. On that note, there's a possibility that your screen is frozen right now, and so am I. <laughs> now that we have seen you know, employees' perspective being in their shoes. Now we try as a leader to fill into company shoes and try to understand how remote working looks like from, an, from a company's perspective this time. Wonder what the advantages of working from home looks like from a company's perspective? Let's take a look. First, a larger talent pool. Um, actually, how about, let me just correct it, a larger talent ocean. Now, what does that even mean? With work from home, employees can literally function from anywhere. This means you can recruit the best skilled candidates and subject matter experts from a talent ocean that is all across the globe. Additionally, work from home is super beneficial for those companies that are based in geographical remote locations who do not surely have access to potential client, uh, candidates. Second, lower expenses. Remote teams are primarily a cost savings. Remote teams reduces multiple other expenses such as office rent, infrastructure, interiors, commute allowances, office supplies, office snacks, or even electricity costs. And guess what? This is, it is also environmental friendly. I forgot to mention completely, companies can also save up on hiring expenses, included candidates' travels and you know, hotel costs that goes along with it. Third, sick time. By working from home, employees have lesser chances of being exposed to contagious bacteria and viruses on their way to work or even at work. Also, employees can avoid those stressful commutes and avoid lunch rushes, which will result in better well-being of an employee. Fourth, a Stanford study revealed that work from home employees are 13% more productive. I think I can understand, understand why. Just as we were discussing, you know, eliminating that commute, an employee can arrive refreshed at work and is already ready to boost their performances. Next, let's talk about the potential work from home disadvantages, but, you know, in a company's perspective, of course. So let's first talk about monitoring productivity. Employers can sometimes find it difficult to monitor and track the success of their remote employees. Second, let's talk about the cohesive company culture. As you can imagine, team cohesion and team bonding can be challenging while you're working from home. The more exposure that team members have to each other, the more established and the more well-defined the company culture becomes. However, work from home limits your exposure significantly. As a result, it can be difficult to foster a cohesive company culture. Third, let's talk about communication and how it's being affected. Let's face it, pitching new ideas, navigating technical issues, negotiations, and resolutions are already so tough to deal with in person, right? But now meetings being completely virtual, it can be so much tougher. We are 100% dependent on digital tools and internet connectivity. Let's say challenges in either of these fields can have significant impact on the success of the team, which in turn could have negative impact on the company goals. Lastly, online hiring and onboarding. Yep, normal onboarding is already complicated enough and in all remote onboarding, can have additional challenges of missing that in-person team bonding, team integration, and even experiences of companies' corporate culture. Okay, so why do I have a superhero slide here? Well, some superheroes are not born, they are made. So are leaders. 
although all these superheroes characters are fictional based on some comic books right but one just cannot deny that there are a lot of leadership skills that we can learn and use them in real world scenarios and guess what we are going to do it today we will be exploring four of our all time favorite superheroes and how they can inspire us to grow into true leaders but before i start talking about them i wanted to start with one of the leader's true superpower that is be human and be available for your team okay so let's call our first superhero who is captain america what makes him so iconic answer is he knows how to put people first always it is also no accident that his primary weapon is a shield that he uses to protect people similarly a leader should always put his team first and protect the team from a fallout captain america is someone who everyone turned to in the times of need which makes him trustworthy Similarly, just because someone is in a leadership position doesn't make them a leader until they can earn that trust, and they're someone that people can turn to in times of need. Next, let's talk about my personal favorite superhero. Any guesses? Okay, I'll tell it. It's Iron Man, Mr. Tony Stark, our favorite superhero. Iron Man is someone who's known to live on technology. just like iron man invested all his power in technology similar leaders in especially in our current times should invest in it he showed us exactly how in the times of need can technology save the world guess who's going to be our next superhero coming up superman or mr clark kent apart from his superhuman powers he's known for flexible time management don't believe me I can help with that. See, as as Clark Kent, he goes to work every day, does paperwork, pays taxes, etc., etc. But as Superman, he has to save the world. In our case, an employee has to be managing his work as well as his children and elderly family members during the situation. A leader must recognize and value flexible time management, just as a Superman. Last, but literally the most awesome superhero. coming up batman as we all know what batman is scared of right he was scared of bats being aware of his weakness which is bats and converting it in strengths similarly as a leader we must try to convert the disadvantages of remote work in our situation and try to overcome it here's a quick example of how a leader's role looks like leaders should bridge the gap between employees and companies work from home challenges that we just discussed now i'm going to focus on how we can bridge this gap now that we've covered the benefits and the challenges of you know working from home as well as the ideal traits a leader must exhibit let's dive into the five ways we can lead our teams our remote team especially right So here are these five cornerstones of leading a work from home team effectively during this pandemic. That is communication, managing anxiety during pandemic, reconnecting, promoting overall wellness and fostering work life balance. So let's start with communication. Again, what will, what is a presentation without any humor? answer boring and not so fun right <laughs> so i'm going to decide on communicating better here by adding an obligatory humorous image of our mr ceo cat who happens to be distant huh what do you think would happen if mr cat becomes your leader okay see i love cats but you have to admit that just sometimes they can be a bit moody and inaccessible right so Now think back if we should be a leader like Mr. CEO Cat or is more accessible especially when our remote team demands continuous communication there for team success. Second, don't assume your team member is a superhero with some really cool mind reading powers. Be clear and leave nothing to interpretations. Third, I know we've touched on this before so I will not get into a lot of details here. but personally i love video calls for the same reason 
I feel I can connect so much better with person, just like, you know, being able to see their facial expressions. But I also wanted to quickly note that some people are not comfortable on video or they don't want their personal settings broadcast. So we should be absolutely respectful of that. Lastly, be mindful of the time zones when you're planning a group meeting. Your teammate may just be visiting their family, which are in different time zones. So how can we communicate better now? Let's try to focus on that. First, let's invest more in IT. And it's OK to ask, why should we do that? Let's see. We all have been in that situation where our video calls were frozen and the million times our internet refused to connect and literally gave up on us. Or we have accidentally spilled water on the keyboard, just like I did. So I'm assuming it's normal. OK, maybe not. With all of us working remotely, it becomes even more important to get our technology to work right because we are 100% dependent on it. Oh. I'm so sorry. I feel there's a technical difficulty right now, and my presentation just got turned off on its own. Just one minute. Let me pull up that presentation again. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Hello? Am I still connected on the internet? Yes. See another technical difficulty here. I have no idea. Sorry, I have no idea why the internet got disconnected. Sorry about the, the technical difficulties. So we were on, um, on investing more in IT. Like we were just talking, the internet re literally refused to connect and gave up on me here. So now we know why we should invest more in IT. Coming back to the, to the second part, which is one-on-one -on -one meetings. It is essential that leaders organize one-on-one -on -one meetings with their direct reports as this gives them a chance to track back on employees' individual progress. At Azure, we practice one-on-one -on -one with our direct reports. I think it is a great opportunity to learn about our employees' concerns. OK, this is what we need to understand. Everybody's different, right? And not everyone will be comfortable talking about their personal challenges in front of their teams. And schedule regular one-on-one -on -one meetings. Third, let's talk about team meetings. It is important that as leaders, we track progress of our teams, brainstorm together, understand any roadblocks, and provide feedback and solutions to our teams. This will result in stronger bonding between teams and will give an opportunity to improve team cohesion that will further improve the team performances. Fourth, let's talk about training. So you know that many employees may not be comfortable with this new work from home team dynamics, or they're not comfortable using digital technologies. Also, they probably don't know how to ask for help. Here's where leaders can step in and solve this problem. They can establish trainings that are focused on building solid remote team collaborations on how to use different digital tools. Lastly, See, I agree virtual communications can have its own pros and cons, but let's talk about how we have gotten closer to richer digital applications. Example, online meeting features have added advantages as compared to in-person meetings. 
leaders should guide their teams because not everyone may know how to make best use of online features such as recording, screenshots, and many other awesome features. Okay, here are some quick communication and collaboration tools. Some of the popular ones are for legal requirements like DocuSign and HelloSign. Next, for daily communication like Slack, Messenger, Skype, and Teams. For project management tools, some of the common ones are Trello, Asana, and Jira. Common cloud storage like Google Drive and Dropbox. And some of the very popular meet meeting and video call tools that people use is Zoom, Skype, and WebEx. So how do you think we can build a solid foundation for a great relationship with our teams? Answer is building a solid rapport. The first cornerstone of being an effective leader is asking questions. Regularly check in with your employees and ask them not only about their work struggles, but also about non-work related concerns. Ask them about the challenges they're facing now. We've been in this situation for months. Have you checked in since March? If not, it's, if not already, you know, it's never too late to start. Second, asking questions is not enough if you're not hearing them out. You know how the saying goes, we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. Leaders need to ensure that everyone has a voice and they feel that they are valued and heard. So how can we do that? Give your 100% focus to employees. Make sure that your conversations are uninterrupted and also think back on your emotions while being able to step into their shoes. Another key aspect of, relation, of leadership is development of, intel, of emotional intelligence. It is essential to be able to recognize unspoken emotions. Some employees can be expressive, while some employees may not be able to express themselves. Leaders should try to gauge their facial expressions during the video calls. Lastly, I was wondering, how can we further motivate our employees so that we can maintain and grow our company, our company core values while working remotely? As we all know that incentives are the best motivators. Employers can also recognize their employees by awarding incentives that will encourage employees to continue to give their best and also motivate them to follow company culture and values. For an, for an instance, at Azure, California, we recognize our work family in a lot of different ways. For instance, we recognize amazing Azurians through weekly spotlights, quarterly Azurian awards, awards shout outs, gift cards, and a lot more. Finally, let's not ignore the microscopic elephant that is hopefully not in the room. We just cannot forget why a majority of employees are working from home these days. COVID-19 has the world in state of anxiety and distress, and people aren't just working from home. But if we learn from hardships that the workforce is facing as leaders in innovation, we can indeed lead through these times as well. So for specific examples of how to move forward, we are going to try to move, move backwards and start with the state of distress. First, be empathetic and supportive. Remember a few slides back what superheroes taught us? What made them so iconic? Be human. Similarly, leaders' biggest superpower is to be human, be empathetic. Once again, remember, like we just discussed how it feels to be in employee shoes and we were able to recognize employees' challenges. Now that we have a better understanding of these challenges during this pandemic, we also need to support them. Recognizing compounding responsibilities. Speaking of the recognition, talk the talk when it comes to compounding responsibilities. Ask them how the homeschool is going. Ask them how their parents are. Ask them how happy their dog is to have them home all the time. <laughs> Just listen to them. And most importantly,
importantly, recognize these responsibilities that they're facing. Lastly, after you've recognized their responsibility through talking, it may lead to a conversation about flexible working schedules that will benefit both the employee and the company. Third, connect. So how can we do that? See, another challenge that an employee faces is by, you know, just by working remotely is missing that human connection that comes from being at work. Hence, leaders should help to reconnect with their peers by planning and organizing virtual team activities that would still keep the social connection intact. For instance, a few of active, some of the activities that we Azurians regularly participate in are the virtual cooler meetings, virtual pizza party, virtual team games, and how effectively they've lessened the distance between our teammates during this time of social isolation. Events like these have helped us at Azur to keep our core values intact while even staying connected with our peers virtually. Leaders should constantly encourage their teams to get together amongst themselves and arrange virtual office socializing meetings, just like we discussed. Fourth, overall well-being. We all know that there are a lot of companies out there that they have these employee assistance programs for wellness, like reimbursing for gym membership and stuff. Of course, during this pandemic time, we can't really hit the gym, right? So how can we as leaders encourage our employees for overall well-being? I think I might know how we can do that. For starters, there's a plethora of online platforms that offer mindfulness and wellness programs by trained professionals that focus on coping with anxiety and stress and fosters overall well-being. A leader should customize and leverage companies' employee assistance program resources so that employees can make the most out of it virtually. Lastly, before I get into this slide, do you guys think that maybe work and life are happening at the same time when working from home instead of having that work-life balance that we want? For instance, an employee can be worried about finishing his or her own project while at the same time, he or she is worried about homeschooling or taking care of a sick pet. So how can we solve that? So the first one is lead by example. See, at the end of a typical day in office, when an employee turns off the computer and starts to walk out of the door, both a physical and a mental cue that, OK, this is the end of the day. But when you're working from home, there's no actual leaving. An employee can start to feel overworked, which is counterproductive. Here is where it is important for leaders to lead by example. For instance, leaders should ensure that they enjoy and encourage a healthy work-life balance too. Like have set our office hours, take breaks, and do not contact or email employees after office hours or expect them to deliver work after us. Leaders can also promote time management strategies by investing in digital technologies like time tracking apps. Second, review workloads. Due to rapid switch to remote work, expectedly leaders are more worried you know, about managing employee productivity. But what leaders should pay closer attention to is employee feeling overworked or burnt out. And, and how can we check that? For this, leaders should regularly check in with their employees and ask them if they are burnt out or if they have spare ability or if they're just doing fine. It is important since what may look like a small project for you may take days or even weeks or even more people to accomplish that project. Third, increase support for compounding responsibilities. I know that we've already spoken about recognizing, you know, compounding responsibilities, especially during pandemic. However, it is not enough for leaders to just recognize it, but it is important that we offer support to employees who are homeschooling their kids or taking care of their older parents. For example, leaders can support the team by offering flexible work hours and less rigid lunch breaks. All right, time for our parting slide. I've listed some takeaways from the presentation today. First, 
build a culture of trust. It is very important. Now you must wonder why is that? See, remote workers are, are portrayed as lazy and isolated. However, perception is not the truth. A great employee is a great employee, whether working at the office or working at home. This, the surroundings of an employee may change, but not the skills, knowledge, and the hard work that and the hard work that is put in by the employee. So your job as a leader in this situation is to bridge the gap that is formed due to remote work during pandemic and build a culture of trust. I believe the key, the key purpose of a leader is to continuously motivate and bring out the best in their team while being absolutely empathetic to their, towards their team, especially during these challenging times. So recognize their individual challenges as it will further motivate them to give their best. Third, especially during these pandemic times, pay closer attention to your employees and support them in whatever way possible. Ask your employee how they are doing. Ask them how their families are doing. Ask them if you haven't already. Successful companies have a people mindset first. So invest in your employees. Your return on investment is happier employees. Simply put, happier employees means happier clients. Finally, lead effectively using some of the cornerstones of leaderships that we discussed earlier, like clear and effective communication, promoting overall wellness, recognizing employee anxiety due to the challenging times and supporting them, and of course, fostering work-life balance. Most importantly, don't forget to lead by example for your super team. Thank you so much. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, looks like my audio is echoing here. Um, so, Thank you, Amishi, for um, that presentation. That was that was really great and uh, definitely refreshing to see that. And really liked all those ideas. I know quite a few of them we've been uh, implementing here at Greenlight, and they've been very helpful. So really appreciate that presentation. Um, we do have a few questions coming in, and uh, if there's any more that's on top of mind for anybody, feel free to submit those in the Q and A uh, session section on your right side of your screen. And we can try to get to as many as we can here in the last few minutes. Um, but Amishi, starting out, uh, first question is, will Azure Group increase the percentage of remote workforce permanently, or will they go back to business as usual after the pandemic is over? Hello? Oh, can you yeah. hear me? Yeah. Did you okay. hear that question? Yes. Yes. Okay. I, I, I heard that question. Yes. So, so I don't know if like the, the work from home is, is here to stay. Like, you know, like I just shared in one of my, my slides today that maybe, you know, there's a, there's a, pos there's a potential possibility that, you know, with, with everybody going work from home and, you know, that now that people are starting to learn, you know, like how work from home situation looks like, maybe there are chances that you know some employees or you know like you know like like the industry maybe also would be trying to grow a little bit into work from home now that we know how to successfully you know or you're at least learning how to do that but definitely i mean i mean i i feel like you know work from home has a lot of potential like you know like i feel like with all the advantages and disadvantages and how we can manage that Maybe there's a possibility that, you know, some of us can do that. But um, like, you know, and now I know that a lot of companies um, are, are already, you know, starting to come up with how to going back to business after the pandemic. So I think um, it's, it's, it's going to all depend uh, on, you know, how the situation is and, you know, how it turns out. But I think work from home is definitely something that we can at least learn in our current situation until, you know, wherever we are, you know, working from home, I guess. So, yeah. <laughs> Certainly, yeah, I can't agree more. Um, and uh, next question is pretty similar. So what lessons, tools, and features from working from home as a team 
would you implement even when going back to the office? Oh, that's that's a very interesting question. So um, some of these that I absolutely love, I will actually talk about uh, Slack that I, I that's my my personal favorite. Here I'll talk about my personal favorites that, you know, I've really found it interesting because I don't know if you've explored that Slack also has these other apps. So I know that, um, you know, a lot of teams, they they have you know, they have different locations and, you know, sometimes there are remote teams or they're working in different locations. So here is where you can use, you know, different features on our apps on Slack that you could use. For example, there's something called Donut. There's something called Icebreakers that can actually help you with team bonding, even when you actually move on site, right? So these apps can actually help you stay connected or just like help you with team bonding. So that is something that I personally love. And there are a lot of other apps like I was talking about, apps that we use for legal requirements like DocuSign and all of these. I think these are some really great apps that we can still continue to use. Um, and I think there's a lot of potential that, you know, we can, um, I mean, there are so many other apps that, you know, I probably haven't even covered in today's presentation that we could continuously be using. But I think, yeah, those are some of the great ones. Awesome. Yeah, thank you for that. And actually, I'm glad you mentioned Slack because we use Slack at Greenlight and that's one of my favorite tools. It's, it's great for that quick communication between our team. And uh, another thing we do as well is actually, you mentioned the one-on-one -on -one meetings. Um, we, we really like doing those, even when we're not remote. Um, that's been something that's been really nice for us. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, if you look at the Zoom, we try to have the one-on-ones very regularly. And I think it's, like I was sharing, it's it's a great way to get to know about individual progress. And you get to know, like, you know, if your, if your direct reports have any challenges and, you know, and, like, how you can, like, you know, help them, like, you know, on a personal level, sort of, like I was sharing that not everybody gets, you know, comfortable about talking there, maybe even professional challenges in front of their team. So this is definitely a great way to stay in touch, you know, just like, you know, being one on one. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and then, yeah, another one along that, along those lines, what's your favorite thing that Azure Group has implemented during the remote work? Oh, that's okay. That is awesome. So one of my favorites are, um, I love the the virtual pizza parties. I think that that's that's one of my favorites. I because you know it has been really really like you know I feel like I'm I'm just stuck here all isolated and I get to see my team members and also meet their families and you know I like I know like two of our our, our coworkers they just had babies so it was amazing and you know it kind of puts you off that stress and you you know you kind of keep your work stress away. I think it's a great way to connect with your team members. And just be able to you know see them and talk to them and, and I love that. That's my favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's really fun. Uh, that, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. I'll see if we can get that going here too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it looks like we have time for about one more question here before we wrap things up. So we do have uh, one with the leadership. So um, what advice would you give to for managing a team of managers ah that's an interesting one so um i think e even here what what i feel what is the most important thing is that you know firstly again having that you know like i feel like a lot of what we talked today would be similar you know in terms of building a culture of trust and, you know, having that people first mindset, I think, you know, when we are like even like, you know, implementing these, I think we are already, you know, helping our teams greatly here, like, you know, just being directly being able to help our employees and our direct reports. So I think having that people first mindset is is what would be the the top priority there or you know just like even inspiring them so that they can also inspire their uh their their direct reports and i think that is the most important advice i feel i could give absolutely yeah i i love that thank you um and, and once again um wrapping things up thank you amishi for presenting this was really refreshing really inspiring and uh, thank you for answering the questions as well at the end um Thank you to everyone for attending today's session. Um, this session, as I mentioned, is recorded and will be available by the end of the day, at least the end of the week. And um, just as a reminder, um, in 10 minutes, 
approximately 10 minutes, the next session will be starting. So if you're interested in how to navigate raising funds for med tech startups during a pandemic, use your unique link to tune in. If you haven't already signed up, you can register for the next session at virtual-summit.greenlight.guru. Um, thank you again, Amishi. Any closing words? Um, no, just I, I just firstly wanted to thank everybody for joining the, the talk today. I really appreciate it. I'm sorry, I have no idea. I know at, at some point the the presentation just like literally gave up on me and I don't know how it just like closed down. So I had to reopen my, my presentation. So firstly, thank you everybody for bearing with me on that. And thank you for having that patience. And I really hope you all loved it. And please stay safe. And again, thank, thank you once again for giving me this opportunity and uh, coming to my talk. Thank you. Uh, yep. Thank you, Amishi. And thank you, everyone, for joining. And take care.